So Nikon has been in the mirrorless game for a while now, but a huge announcement just dropped, and that is that they will be the first mirrorless camera company to allow raw video with ProRes RAW. Plus, they're releasing a brand new filmmaker kit that's an insane value, and I'm gonna be talking with Dave from Kinotika about all of the details in this video. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with over 25,000 classes on video editing, graphic design, photography, business, and so much more. A premium membership gets you access to high quality classes where you can learn the skills you need to thrive as a content creator and entrepreneur so you can do the work you love. It's super affordable with an annual subscription coming in at less than $10 a month. And I love getting access to classes from business experts and even YouTube creators like John Olson's class on photography and Sarah Dietschy's class on how to vlog better. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare today and the first 500 Think Media subscribers to use the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. Just click the link in the description to get started today. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And we're here at CES. I'm with Dave from Kinotika. How's it going? It's going great. I'm super pumped to be hanging out with you. You are definitely one of my filmmaker experts. And I'm so excited because you've been rolling around with the Nikon Z for a while now. And uh, you've had hands on. I want to talk about the filmmaker kit. I want to talk about your thoughts. And what's interesting here is I think that this camera is taking serious punches at some of the other brands with the fact that you could use it as a beginner and, and, and really get a lot of features. But now you can take it all the way up to raw video. Break down what you're thinking about this whole thing, Dave. Yeah, this is really exciting news. Ever since I first shot on a RED camera, I always wanted to have raw video. A lot of photographers are spoiled because they've had the ability to edit raw photos for a very long time. Imagine what you can do in Lightroom with stills now in your video editor at a very affordable price point. Up until now, the only camera that I would recommend would be a RED, and that you're, that's $20,000. So at CES, Atomos announced the ability to do raw recording on the Ninja 5. It's not out yet, it'll be coming soon, uh, but if you buy the Filmmaker kit for under $4,000, you can actually get everything you need to be kind of an indie filmmaker. It's really amazing. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because, of course, Canon's released mirrorless cameras, Sony is is bringing a lot of mirrorless cameras, Panasonic is uh, announcing mirrorless, but what do you think now, having been traveling around with this Nikon mirrorless, it's solid. I mean, you got phase detection, you've got uh, a good lens offerings with a whole, we'll put a link to it in the description, a whole map of multiple lenses coming out for it in the next couple years. Of course, you can adapt all of the old lenses, but really, it's a feature-stacked camera from slow motion across the board, what are some of your thoughts having used it for a while now? Well, yeah, we've had it for a couple months. We've been using it as our main camera for our channel on Kinetika, and we're shooting everything in 4K full frame. The, the thing that I love about this is, first off, it is full frame. There's no crop going on. You can do a crop if you want, but if you actually want full frame, you get that. You also have amazing autofocus, like you said, with phase detect autofocus, very similar to Sony and Canon. Uh, I can see that getting better with time with firmware and things like that. Honestly, kind of everything that we've always wanted, there's has stabilization on the sensor, kind of everything that we've talked about, like why doesn't this have this or this or that, or it, it kind of has almost all those things. The only thing that I wish it did have was a flip around screen, but you know, you can't, beggars can't be choosers, right? Yeah, 100%. And so what's interesting is that when I start thinking about, if you're trying to upgrade to mirrorless, you've got some big decisions to make. What brand are you gonna go with? And I think that you have so much similarity. You have all the features you need to just get started with the camera. This is also a new lens that's dropping soon, 14 to 30, yeah. really good vlogger lens. And so you could start out and have you found that, what would you say the learning curve is if you were just getting into the camera and you wouldn't really consider yourself a filmmaker yet? Well, the thing that I love about this camera is it's really intuitive to use. The button layout just kind of makes sense. There's some nice function buttons in places where your fingers rest that a lot of camera manufacturers don't take advantage of. There's buttons right here, which I really like. Uh, you've got a top LCD screen. The EVF is really nice to use and the grip is really comfortable. So if you're coming from an older DSLR, then this will be really easy to learn. If you're completely brand new, I think it'll be pretty natural for you to pick it up, watch some tutorials online maybe if you're completely unaware of how to change your exposure, for example, but uh, this camera is a great place to start if you're getting into video. And I think overall the message that I want to put out there is that Nikon is kicking butt with video and that's kind of weird to say because for several years that was not the case. Absolutely. 
And so you could pick up this body. Now it starts at 2000, which is similar to the other offerings on the market. There's a kit lens, kind of a fixed F4, 24 to 70 that you could get with it as well. But if you wanted to jump into the filmmaker's kit, you get the body, you get that lens, you get two batteries, you get an arm, you get the Atomos recorder. Um, you also get a Moza gimbal. And that filmmaker's kit announced here at CES, and it is available now, at $4,000, you're saving almost $1,200. And what's cool about that is, again, depending on where you're at on your journey, filmmakers might already be like, that's legit. But somebody that's maybe just wanting to get into it, YouTubers, content creators, now has kind of a package that could really get them started with creating world-class content. What do you think about the whole kit? I think the kit is wonderful. Like you said, it's a place to start. You could just shoot normal profiles and don't mess with RAW yet. Just kind of have the tools for when you're ready to upgrade. And I think that's what's great about it. Having that gimbal is a great place to start to learn how to get those stable movements, kind of like a steady cam if you're not familiar with gimbal work and things like that. But um, the stabilization on the camera also is wonderful. So if you're not the best operator, the, the camera will help fix some of that as well. But uh, I think it's a great place to start. It has a Rode mic. It's better than this one, actually. It's the Rode video mic. Um, and two batteries. These batteries last forever. Everything in it, you know, it's everything you need, really, to get started. I agree. So as kind of a summary, you know, again, if you're thinking about investing in uh, really maybe a new camera, a mirrorless camera, I'm excited about the fact that you could start out and if you were to get the filmmaker's kit and then evolve as you go because a lot of times there is that learning curve. You're creating content, you're able to just make simple YouTube videos, leave things on auto, take great photos. But of course, you also get the lens adapter so you could adapt to other lenses. Nikon has lenses everywhere so you could always pick them up secondhand, Craigslist, OfferUp, eBay, and really make your world much larger. But then on the flip side, you could also evolve with the times. Once RAW hits, once you start leveling up your uh, video editing workflow and things like that. And you've edited a little bit of ProRes RAW. You said it's it's crazy. And and just for if you're new to RAW, it went, like you said, when you edit in Lightroom, you can change your white balance after the fact. You have much more versatility in your exposure if in case you shot your footage wrong. And then, of course, color grading and be able to push highlights and shadows and things like that. Yeah. But what is editing ProRes RAW been like uh, in your experience? Well, right now at the moment, Adobe isn't offering the ability to do ProRes RAW. So if you're an Adobe editor, uh, just stay tuned. They are going to do that eventually. I'm a Final Cut Pro 10 user, and that's only the, the only way to use it right now. Um, and it just functions like ProRes. It's kind of amazing. If you're not familiar with ProRes, it's the native codec on an Apple machine. So it always plays kind of the best, even compared to H.264, which is a smaller file size, but it doesn't play as well as ProRes because Apple designs the codec. So Apple has worked with Atomos directly, and Nikon and Atomos have worked directly as well. So it's this marriage of Apple, Nikon, and Atomos creating this amazing raw platform to edit your your footage and uh, it runs smooth that's the main thing all these older raw codecs uh, like from black magic for example they shot uncompressed C uh, was it cinema DNG raw which for the files were ridiculously s massive and it, you couldn't edit it in your in your computer you had to have a, a beefy machine use resolve things like that um, now you can use just a basic $300 program Final Cut Pro on a laptop and edit raw video up to 4k with the, with the Atomos Ninja 5. One thing that I did want to mention though that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about is if you want the benefits of RAW but you don't want to mess with 4K, you could do 1080p RAW on this as well. Um, so I think that's kind of an interesting fact. If you want a really fast turnaround, you don't want massive file size, you could shoot 1080p and still change your white balance, get those highlights and all the beautiful things that you get with RAW uh, footage. I love it. Well, obviously, we're kind of just doing an overview, uh, overview here. Very excited about the Nikon Z lineup of cameras and the Filmmaker kit. And of course, we'll list details in the description below and links to various things. Now, we didn't really go into depth of the features of the specific cameras. So if you want to check out a video Dave and I did, I'll link that up on the YouTube card and put it in the description below. Question of the day, are you thinking about upgrading your camera this year? And what brand, what model are you thinking about? And what do you think about the Z series as well as the Filmmaker kit? Definitely let us know in the comment section below.